this is going to be a crazy trip down memory lane. So buckle yourself up, smash that like button, and let's begin. So there have been a lot of wildfires in California recently, and I've started doing some mental packing and checklisting in case we do need to make a dash for it. As I was looking through some of my old memorabilia, I found a box of old tech goods that I've saved up over the years. I thought it'd be fun to do a little sifting through of the decades in tech, share with you guys some of these prehistoric fossils, and see if these jog up some memories of earlier times, before social media, before all of this crazy digital overwhelm that we now live in. Back when I was 15, things were still relatively pretty simple. I mean, it was just mainly the big blue Facebook. So to my fellow 90s kids, let's take a quick jog down memory lane. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to smash that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. I post new videos every week. So this is my box of little digital treasures that I could never bear to throw out over the years. So I'm just gonna go in here and reach for the oldest thing that I can find, which is this iPad. I mean, this is an iPod. Oh my God, look how tiny this iPod is. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. This is the first digital device that I ever owned. And my dad actually gave it to me when I first moved to America. You probably don't know this, but I spent the first few years of my life in Shanghai with my grandparents. So I remember when I was starting elementary school, my dad gave me this iPod and it had a few albums on it. It had one of Britney Spears' albums, it had a Carpenter's album, it had a Nina Gordon album, and it had some Green Day songs. I still vividly remember American Idiot by Green Day being one of the first songs that I had ever listened to, really, um, especially one of the first songs in English. And I remember that was really like one of the first American songs I ever listened to. <laughs> and then thinking about this and some of my old journal entries, I just remember Apple's famous iPod commercials of all the colorful silhouettes doing these like crazy poses, listening to music. I don't know if you guys remember that. That was definitely something of my generation. This is not a phone, but it's also in the box. This is a Samsung phone uh, camera. It is the first camera that I ever bought for my blog and for my YouTube channel. Cutest thing about this phone is that it doesn't have a flip over screen, but it actually like shows an LED display of selfie mode. So you actually can see yourself. I took this camera with me everywhere. This is one of my first cameras, baby. It's been quite a journey since then. Oh, okay, so the next item, I already spy it from the corner of my eye, is this silver Motorola razor. Oh my god. I got this baby in fourth grade, I think. My dad is a pretty techie person and he also works in tech, so I think I definitely got a lot of tech products earlier than most kids my age at the time and liked giving me tech presents. I remember I got this Motorola Razor in fourth grade and literally no one else in my class had a phone. I felt like such a cool kid literally knowing that this was in my backpack and I decorated it with stickers of course and on the back too I have some Prince of Tennis stickers on this. I didn't even have anyone to call with this phone because literally no one else in my school at that time like basically had a mobile phone. So I remember I would take this phone around and I would literally just change the settings on it all day because on razors you can change like the color, you can change the desktop background, they had like five or six wallpapers you could pick from. So I would just constantly be changing my homepage buttons from like blue to red to gray and then I'd be changing my wallpaper around. That's basically all I ever did with this phone. And this one actually had a camera on it, so I probably took some prehistoric selfies as well with this phone. But man, oh man, this just brings back some crazy memories. If I was a 15 year old right now, with the wisdom that I have as a 23 year old, which is not that much, but still significantly more, I would just save myself all the hassle of a smartphone and just get like a brick phone like this just focus on school and having a good time with my friends. So the next phone, and this phone is so broken, 
This is a Sony Ericsson Walkman phone. So these were pretty popular back in the day too. But when I graduated from this elementary school phone, I got a Sony Ericsson Walkman phone, I believe in sixth grade. Sony Ericsson has like an even cooler um, interface than Motorola. And yes, of course, I decked out the back of this phone and it's all mainly prints of tennis. Behind my real best friends and possibly my journals, this phone was third in line for that. So if you guys want to see a crazy journaling montage and learn some interesting things about journaling, you should definitely check out this video. Oh, oh, this gives me such deep nostalgia. I just instantly want to go back to middle school. Okay, so after my incredible experience with this Walkman phone, I decided to explore what else could possibly be out there. I saw this one phone online and I became obsessed with the idea of having this phone. And it wasn't even an American phone, it was an LG phone from Korea. But little me had her heart set on having this phone. And this phone is the LG Lollipop. Oh my God, hands down the cutest phone in the universe. The cutest thing about LG Lollipop is when you close it, there are animations like LED light up animations on the front screen. Or when people call you, you can set like custom LED light patterns like hearts. If you close your phone, it'll play a certain LED animation and you can set different colors. Like you can do blue or purple or red. So I ended up getting the unlocked version of this phone which basically lets you use an international phone with an American carrier. I got this phone in eighth grade. I was legitimately obsessed with this phone. Like my life was basically complete at that time, all because of this phone. This phone took the cutest selfies. This clear bar at the top would light up and dance with different colors. And I decorated the back of it with pretty kuda stickers. I seriously don't even know how to describe. Like I felt like such a princess with this phone. Looks like that now. It's really cute, it's like animated, so like. So, LG Lollipop, highly recommend. Don't know if that is still relevant today, but seriously, this phone is amazing and it's so cute and uplifting. It wasn't your typical 2008 phone, literally wasn't even sold in America, but once I saw this phone online, I just had to have it and I don't regret it at all. Probably one of the best purchases in my life. So what happened after that was Google came out with their Android phone, which looks like this. It's got this cute little Android geometric design on the back. And this one was a gift from my dad. Wait, Bridge, come here for a sec. Can you come here for a sec? Just come here, just come here for a sec. Just sit down for a sec. Okay, okay, close your eyes. Open them. <laughs> Wait, do you remember these? No. <laughs> I got to get on my <laughs> My sister obviously does not find this as interesting. It's got this little sliding mechanism and it's kind of cool. I liked this because at that time, my parents were still using pagers at work. This is when I momentarily became a good texter because of the keyboard. I mean, it was hard to eventually stop using this phone and switch into this phone. I forget what exactly prompted the switch, but there must have been something that I wasn't able to do well with this phone. It might have been that texting took too long because this is like one of those keyboards where you have to like type, 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 type to get the letter. And since I was such a mobile phone person, I also became obsessed with phone decoration, especially cell phone charms, which was definitely a thing back then, especially in Asia. I actually started making my own cell phone charms out of polymer clay and I started selling them to my classmates. So then the next phone I had after that was this phone. And this is the Moto X phone, which is also a Google phone. But what I loved about them is that they had really pretty color schemes. I definitely had good memories with this phone as well. It was a touch screen and it had the thing for the first time where you could like have multiple home pages. And the cool thing about this phone that I still remember loving is that you could set a different wallpaper for each 
home screen. So yeah, I had this phone for a while and I definitely really liked this phone. Then the next phone that I had was this Apple iPhone. And I think this is the iPhone S. And this is my first Apple phone that I ever owned. And I think I got this, um, I got this phone at some point in high school towards the end of high school. The craziest story about this phone. In my high school senior year, we have a tradition called senior skip day where all the seniors skip school and they just drive out and hang out at the beach instead. On senior skip day at the beach, I lost this phone. My friend drove me back and I realized I did not have my phone. And the next day we went back to look for my phone and we couldn't find it at the beach. So I thought it was probably gone forever. So right after that, I was supposed to go to Asia. So one of my friends actually gave me their phone. So this is a Samsung smartphone. By now I have like used so many smartphones, but this is a Galaxy S4 phone. So my friend gave me this phone to use since I had lost my iPhone at the beach a couple days before I was supposed to go on my trip. And I believe I started college with this phone as well. A few months into college, someone texts me on that number and tells me that they found my phone at the beach. This is straight up six months since senior skip day. This iPhone had survived under the sand on the beach for six months and somehow serendipity returned it back to my hands. So then at one point in college, I got the iPhone 7. Big screen, as you can see, very big screen compared to my OG iPhone. I feel like a grandma when I'm using this screen, but honestly, I love having something like big like this. In college, I literally dropped this phone off my friend's third floor balcony and it is still this intact. And I used this phone until I got the iPhone 10. I got the iPhone 10 the summer that I went to intern in Asia, my junior year of college. I love that phone. I took it with me to Asia. I used it senior year, but one day at the club in my senior year in Los Angeles, that phone got stolen from my bag. That was really, really sad because I had that phone for just under a year and it had all my photos from my Asia trip and from senior year of college on it. So I lost so many photo memories of like my internship, visiting my friends, going to Japan, and like all the crazy memories from the first half of senior year, they were all on that phone. That was really, really sad. So after that happened, I went back to using this iPhone for a bit, um, even up until I moved to New York and was working there, I was still using this phone. So that has been my phone journey over over the years. As you can see, I started quite young and I was quite lucky to have had so many advanced tech devices from a really young age. Comment what your favorite phone of all times has been. I think honestly, honestly, two of my favorite phones have been these two phones and the iPhone 10 that I lost. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I do think it's really interesting to just look at how technology and our different devices have developed over the years to incorporate our different needs and wants. And now this phone, I could probably take over the world with this phone. So, you know, obviously a lot has changed since then. Thank you so much for watching. If you watched all the way till here, I love you. You are awesome. And if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. I post new videos every week. Either way, make sure you smash that like button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.